Is in the NBA, he was known by many names. Diesel, the big Aristotle, Superman, just to name three. Nowadays, he's just as well known as DJ Diesel. In this season's first episode of Storytime with Shaq, Ro Parrish talks with Shaq about his DJ career and the music festivals he played this past summer. You have a house? Yes. So you understand land and acreage, right? Absolutely. You're all in my acres, brother. <laughs> <laughs> See this mark right here? Don't, don't cross this I won't mark, cross right? that line. I, won't, yeah. I, won't, I don't want to be in violation. In I won't words, cross the line. In the words of Stanley and Friday, please stay out my freaking grass. <laughs> all, this, all this is my house, okay? This is the house. All this is the All right, shout out to Miss Parker, too, by the way. Miss Parker. Oh, yeah. Roe Parish on the set, running point. This is my joint. I'm posted up with Big, about to tell you what it is. Before we get started, I like to shine with my rhymes, but his name is Shaq, and it's story time. That yeah, pretty good. You like that? 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 That was pretty good. Man, you've been having a great summer all over social media, touring, festivals, concerts, clubs. How did that all get started, man? Because the people don't know. You got to let them know. Yo, I was on tour, a DJ Diesel World Tour. <laughs> You know, for me, it's like my game seven. To see all the kids up there jumping up and down and, and having a good time. I have to thank you because you taught me a lot of, about DJ. Appreciate been, you. been DJ since 88. Being that I got good DJ friends like you and Cat Daddy and Smash Cash, all those guys that give me the great music. Being in the music business, I know how to put stuff together just to make the kids jump up and down. For the people that didn't see the tour, didn't see the post, describe what your DJ style is and, and what you bring that's different from everybody else. I bring honor. Honor to the dollar. What I mean by that is, if you're going to pay $50 to see me perform, I got to get your money's worth. Just like in the NBA, I always used to look in the crowd to see a dad and a son, or a dad and his daughter, or a whole family. I'm like, those people paid a lot of money to come watch me play. I actually learned that from my father. He went to a San Antonio Spurs game one time, and we were sitting up in the nosebleed. It was a terrible game. And he said, man, if you ever make it to this league, all these people pay hard-earned money, make sure you give them a good show. So mine is hip-hop, dubstep, trap, uh, white boy classics. I, uh, I'm also a student of this, so I've seen all the top guys, and I see what they do. And I just shacking up what they do a little bit. A lot of things have changed. You talked about you've been DJing for, for, for 20 years. What's the biggest difference from back then to now? It's a lot of new technology that, that makes it easier. So while I'm on the plane, I can take sets and put them together, put them on the thumb drive, and, and you know, be ready to go. Remember that one show we did? They told us we can play anything, and I had to ask to borrow your computer? Yeah. So a lot of times DJs have to be flexible, you know, just like in a game. You know, you can come in the game and say, I'm going to go with the power game. But if the rest ain't calling the game that way, you got to switch it up to, to finesse. Now, in the past, story times with Shaq, in fact, pull up this clip right now when you go, Go in and, and, and put in the, the, the code to unleash a certain shack that comes out. So the preparation, is there a difference prepping for an NBA game as opposed to prepping for a DJ? So if you practice perfect, we talking about practice. The situation comes out perfect. You gotta put sets together. You gotta have your cues at the right point. You gotta make sure the BPMs are right. So I always practice and, and, and prepare. And being there with other DJs is like being at an all-star game. I had a show one time with Aoki, Diplo, Tiesto, some of the great DJs. And I know all of them were looking at me like, okay, this guy thinks he's a DJ. So it's just like when, when you first come to the league and I, in my first all-star game when I beat out Patrick Ewan, I'm in the locker room, but I could see Mike and Scotty and the guys looking at me like, so, you know, at, at, at some point, you always got to, you know, prove yourself. And I don't mind, you know, stepping up to the challenge. We had to start from the bottom. Remember the show we did in San Antonio? Oh, yeah. Here's a clip of me and Ro in San Antonio. Hey, 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 hey. So, you know, they, they, they started from the bottom because I was automatically thrusted into the celebrity DJ category, which is fine. And I just had to work my way up. So now I'm banging them out pretty hard. Out of all the shows you've done so far going under DJ Diesel, what's the most unique situation? What's the best story? My new thing is to just, after the show, jumping in the crowd with the kids. And I have a song called Hack and Shack in the Mouse Pit. And I'm giving kids the permission to try to knock me out. So it's me versus a thousand kids. I haven't failed yet. I like festivals more than clubs. Because the festivals, the kids come to do one thing. I did a festival here in Atlanta at the Motor Speedway for Diplo. Diplo couldn't show up. 
And the crazy thing is Diplo canceled and the promoters asked all the kids, well, who do you want to see? And I was unanimous. So I was at the house and they called me and said, man, we need you going at 12. I said, cool. And I ripped that mother Ooh. down. Ooh. You don't have to beep it out. You can just put, you, you can just put the little uh, emojis right there. I, I ripped that thing all the way down. Well, number one, I got to give you props. Very Appreciate proud it. of you as an instructor, in a sense, seeing the students succeed. So we're going to do this thing called Let's Play a Game. It's going to be called Name That DJ. We got a, a number of NBA players, and I know you're the master of giving nicknames out. Got so it. I'm going to name these players, and I want you to give me their DJ nickname. Okay. Joel Embiid. DJ Afrobeat. James Harden. DJ FTB. FTB means? Fear the beard. Hey. LeBron. DJ Your Highness. Kawhi. DJ Silence. <laughs> you don't say nothing on the mic. Giannis Antetokounmpo. Greek Greek. It's already set. Yeah, he just got to play two live crew music. You got to play freak music all the <laughs> Got into a little something this summer. Actually, I didn't get into anything. It's all about competition. Right. So if, if somebody is offered another show and they say they're better than you, you got to step your game up. More game time on the way ahead here. The Hornets breaking hearts on back-to-back -back nights. Their latest heroics next. It came out on NBA.com Friday as it does every week. And last year's MVP is sitting on the highest rung again here in November. Look at Pascal Siakam slipping into the top five there. There's Giannis Antetokounmpo, the man of which I speak. In the box, off to an 8-3 start. Welcome back, Miles Turner, to the lineup for the Pacers. Missed eight games with an ankle injury. So he goes to the Dirk Nowitzki one-foot fadeaway. The one-footed runner going backwards. Pretty good. He had 16 on the night. Giannis Antetokounmpo. How did he dunk that? Yeah, I mean, no, that's crazy. Well, because he has, you know, nine foot arms wow. and he's he seven just, foot eight. He just unfolds at the rim. And that. And then again. Mm, mm, mm. It's the block on the other end. And he dunks this one. Yes. I mean, yeah, come does. on, guys. After this the is not step. something we've seen before. In transition, you just got to wrap him up. Yes. And send him to the free throw. Line. No walk yet by 15. Second half, more of the same. The spin in the layup. Giannis. Knocking down the three here. He hit three of six from out there. Yeah. 13th career game with three or more threes made. Eric Bledsoe, sure. Where's a Wildcat? Where'd he go to school? There's Thank a Wildcat. Thank you, buddy. There's Wildcats all over there. You, you, Stan, you don't need to help him. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do that anyway. Don't encourage him. No, don't encourage him. <laughs> Uh, Bucks get the win at their third in a row. They've won seven of eight. Maybe their best defensive game of the year so far. Season low 83 points allowed. Season low 32% shooting allowed. And by the way, they did not see their old pal Malcolm Brogdon in the game. Lower back kept him out. It would have been his first time around as an opponent of Milwaukee. The Nets wrapped up their five-game road trip Saturday night in Chicago. Brooklyn dragging a three-game losing streak to the gym, losing those three by an average of 13 a game. They were without Kyrie Irving as they took on Zach Levine and the Bulls in Chicago. Irving out with a shoulder injury. Joe Harris was in, and he can still shoot it. Shoulder just fine, thanks. Harris driving and finding Jared Allen. He's playmaking now. Really good night for Joe. Eight dimes on the night. He's had a lot of, lot of confidence this, this past summer playing with Team USA. Harris had 11 in the first quarter. Kobe White knocks down the three. And then Kobe White flying in coast to coast. Seven points for the Rook. Here's Levine. Working on Harris, spinning him around. Chicago with a six-point halftime lead. On to the fourth now, Spencer Dinwiddie huh. had the feeling. Yes, he did. 20 in the fourth. 20 of get it going. 24 in the fourth. Joe, bully ball. Just bullying Ryan Archie Diakono. And flexing. And flexing. Harris finished with 22. Huh. Chicago uh, looked like they were dead in the water and then all of a sudden hitting, started hitting shots here late. Decided to make their threes late in the game. Yeah, they couldn't make a three all game. I think they hit four in the last three minutes and all of They got this thing to two. Wow. Marking, and that's a tough shot. And then Levine. Down four, 
Running out of time, couldn't get that to go. They were 9 of 39 overall from three-point range. 30 assists for the Nets, a career-high eight from Harris, as you mentioned. And Brooklyn has won seven of their last eight meetings against Chicago. More coming up here on Game Time, including Shaq's summer. It's story time with him, how he became the world's biggest party guest.